Okay, Aiden, listen up. These have to do with the graphs on the, uh, the other side of that worksheet. Uh, these first couple of examples are not part of your uh, worksheet, but they are what you have to use to determine the graphs of the ones that are, on, that are on the worksheet. I have the square root function here, and I have the cube root function here. When I'm graphing these, I typically will create a t-chart, and I put them on the side for convenience sake, I will create a t-chart for x's and y's. And because the numbers I'm plugging in for x here for a square root can't be negative, I'm only going to plug in numbers 0 and bigger. So notice which numbers I chose. I chose 0, 1, 4, and 9 by design. Because I can take the square root of 0, I can take the square root of 1, I can take the square root of 4, and I can take the square root of 9. I plot these four points. You see them here, 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, and 9, 3. And I get the bit of a curve here that's going to go on forever to the right. Now it doesn't flatten out, it, it kind of flattens out a little bit, but it keeps on going upward as it goes. It just slows down how fast it goes upward. Now, it looks like a half of a parabola on its side. That might be a way to remember it. Now that's the square root function, that's the parent graph. The parent graph for the cube root function looks a little different because you can plug negative numbers in for x. So I, I pick these negative numbers and these positive numbers to plug in for x because these are all perfect cubes. This is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, 0, 0 times 0 times 0 times 0, 1 times 1 times 1, 2 times 2 times 2. When I plug these numbers in and take the cube root, I get these values. And notice what the graph looks like. It goes on forever in both directions, going right through the origin here. I graph these five points to get an idea. Okay. These are the two graphs that you're going to use because all the, uh, the problems that are on your worksheet are transformations of them. Shifting them right, left, upward, downward, maybe even stretching them or shrinking them, dilations. So what we're going to do is we're going to knock them out here one at a time. My suggestion is make a t-chart and then plug those values in and then graph the points and try to make a smooth curve. That should look something like one of these. Now the first example here is a cube root of x plus 4. What does the plus 4 do? Well, the plus 4 is a translation to the left. So the graph of this is exactly the graph of this if I was able to pick it up and move it 4 units to the left. Like this point would be right smack dab here. Now to make sure of that, I create a t-chart. I'll plug in. Now remember, I want numbers to come out to be a perfect cube. So if I plugged in, for example, negative 12, you say, my gosh, negative 12. Negative 12 plus 4 is negative 8. The cube root of negative 8 is a negative 2. If I plugged in negative 5, now why negative 5? Because negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1, and the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. See how they're the same values here in the y's, but 4 to the left. So now if I plug in negative 4, Negative 4 plus 4 is 0, I'm going to get a 0. If I plug in uh, negative 3, negative 3 plus 4 is 1, the cube root of 1 is 1. If I plug in, I want to get an 8 here, so if I plug in 4, the cube root of 4 plus 4 and the cube root of 8 is 2. Now, I made the scale a little different on this. Notice here that each 2, you have your own grids drawn in. But the graph here, if I graph those, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Here's negative 12. Negative 12, negative 2 would be right here. Then I have negative 5, 2, 4, negative 5, negative 1. Then I have negative 4, 0. I have negative 3, 1. Remember these tick marks, each were 2. And then I have 4, 2. Do you see the shape? Do you see how it models this one? Now it's a little more scrunched in because of the, of the scale I have. But it goes something, well, if I give a pen to write, it goes, ah, try it again, be careful, do it in pencil. Something like that. And that's how you graph it. These are peaches. Okay, next one up, problem two. The square root of x minus two. What does the minus two here do? Well, it's on the outside of the square root. This was on the inside of the cube root. This would affect it horizontally. This affects it vertically. This is going to drop this down too. If you were to just graph this, which is right here, 
and then put the minus 2, that makes all the y values 2 smaller. So if I use the same x values that I did up here, 0, 1, 4, and 9, take the square root of 0, 0, minus 2, negative 2, see how it's 2 smaller. Take the square root of 1, 1, minus 2 is negative 1, see how it's 2 smaller. Plug the 4 in, the square root of 4 is 2, minus 2 is 0. Plug the 9 in, the square root of 9 minus 2, that's 3 minus 2, that's 1. So my graph is going to look like this guy, but he's going to have dropped down two units. That's a vertical translation, a shift of two units downward. So I have this point, I have this point, I have 4, 0, and I have 9, 1. And you can hopefully see, even though my, graph, my hand's not as steady as it used to be, that this graph here looks just like this graph here, but shifted down two units. All right, now the next one up, I gotta find my worksheet here. The next one up is a cube root that has a one half. So let's see, maybe I can squeeze it. Um, maybe I better clear some of this out. So I'll, I'll clear this out real quick and then see if I can get away with using the same set of axes more than one time. Where's my pen at here? This is, this time, y equals one half the cube root of x. So I'm going to need different x values here because I'm not adding 4 to them. So if I pick different x values, now I'm going to pick because there's nothing inside the parentheses, I'm going to pick the same exact x values as I did back here with my original. Negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, and 8 because I can take the cube root of those numbers. So I'm going to use the negative 8, the negative 1, the 0, the 1, and the 8, and I'm going to graph these. I have to plug them in one at a time. Negative 8, the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2, but times a half is negative 1. If I plug negative 1 in, the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1, times a half is negative 1 half. If I plug 0 in, the cube root of 0 is 0, times a half is 0. If I plug 1 in, the cube root of 1 is 1, times a half is a half. And in this case, if I plug the 8 in, the cube root of 8 is 2, times a half is 1. Notice how the y values are all half of these y values from the parent function because of the 1 half right there. Now, this 1 half doesn't, doesn't translate, it doesn't shift it right, left, or up, or down. What it does is it dilates it, it kind of compresses it down. So in this case, what I think I'll do here is I'll make each one of these tick marks worth one. I'll leave the tick marks here worth two just because, uh, it's, you know, slightly bigger numbers there. And now I'm going to graph these points. Well, let me grab my colored pen here. I hope you've already tried these. Okay, so negative 8, this is 2, 4, 6, 8, negative 8, negative 1 would be right here. Negative 1 would be here, negative 1 half would be right here. 0, 0, 1, 1 half, and then 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, 8, 1 would be right here. You see how you have the same kind of looking graph, except that it's kind of flattened out a little bit. See how this one raised up and dropped down? This one does the same thing, but it's not quite as thick because the one half shrinks it down uh, horizontally, or vertically, vertically, excuse me. So that's, this is actually problem number three now. I just got to keep track of this stuff here. Problem number three. All right. Problem number four. Let me grab my thing here. This is a, another cube root. Well, this guy might not be the right size uh, set of uh, axes here, but we're going to find out in just a second. So for problem number four, stay with me here. Can I let's see. I'm going to have y equals the cube root of x minus 4 plus 5. Look at this mess. I am definitely going to need a different set of axes because look what's going on. It's this function here, the cube root of x, but that's 4 to the right, 5 up. It's as if I take each one of these key points here that I have on the parent graph 
and I go four to the right, five up. That's what I'm going to have to do. So I'm going to have to definitely uh, change this around a little bit. Maybe I can get away with it if I make this a two. And mm, I don't know, maybe if I make this a two. Might have to make this guy a little bit taller. Okay, so that that would be six up there. Let's see what happens. By the way, Aiden, this room is probably 85 degrees. I'm sweating to death. You better watch this video, partner. All right, so now I need some values. Well, I want to keep these, but remember I'm subtracting four. So to get a negative eight, I would use negative four. To get a negative one, I would use a positive three. Let's see, positive three, right? Did I get this right? Positive three. To get a zero, I would have a four. To get a one, I would need a five. And to get an eight, I would need a 12. I don't know, maybe I've got enough here. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. If I plug negative four in, this would be the cube root of negative eight, which is negative two, plus five is three. If I plug three in, three minus four is negative one, the cube root of negative one is negative one, plus five is four. Plug four in, this would be zero, plus five is five. Plug five in, five minus four is one, the cube root of one is one, plus five is six. Plug 12 in. 12 minus 4 is 8. The cube root of 8 is 2. Plus 5 is 7. So you can see the reason why I'm picking these numbers so carefully is because I want to make sure that I get nice values here. But again, if you have this graph, just remember, you take each one of these key points and you go 4 to the right, up 5. That's what's going to happen. So negative 4, 3. Remember, these are 2's now. Negative 4, 3 would be right there. 3, negative, or positive 4 would be right here. 4, 5, let's see. 4, 5 would be right here. 5, 6, 5, 6 would be right here. And then 12, 7. 1, 2, 2 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 7. That would be up a little bit higher. I'm off my graph practically here. So I'm going to get something that's going to, I'm going to get a different color here. I'm going to do the cube roots in green and the square root ones in uh, purple here for you. And you can see this shape, the same as this. Now remember, these are twos, so that's why it looks maybe a little different. The same shape, but it's been shifted to the right and upward. Look at those five key points. Look at these five key points in black there. All right? Now, as you're watching these, if it's still not clicking for you, don't panic. You can ask me. Just give me a call, and I'll be happy to go over with you. All right, the next guy up, we're back to some square roots here. Finally here, let's get rid of some of this, and some of this here, and this guy here, and this right here. And we'll get rid of these as well. Now, I may change my scale here from... 2, 0 to 1. We'll find out here in just a second. I hope I have this one. I don't know. It looks like it's going to be extended. So I have, this is number 5. I have y equals negative 1 plus the square root of x minus 3. All right, the square root of x minus 3. Inside the radical, see the minus 3? That's 3 to the right. All right, there's a minus one on the outside. It'd be like minus one here if I got rid of it. So that's one down. So it's this graph here in green that has been, uh oh, I got them backward. This graph here in green that has been moved three to the right, all this three to the right, and then down one. So in this case, it doesn't look like my set of axes goes out far enough here, so I'm going to extend it, and I'm freehanding it, so sorry about that. All right, so I'm going to graph some points here, but i got to get the key values here. So plug in numbers, it's going to give you perfect squares, like plug in, because it's 3 to the right, 0, 0 is over here, plug in 3, plug in 4, that would give me a 1, plug, I need a 7, that will give me a 4, um, I need a 9, plug in a 12, 
I don't think it's going to go out that far. If I plug in 3, 3 minus 3 is 0 minus the 1. Remember, I took the negative 1, I brought it over here, minus the 1. That'd be negative 1. Plug 4 in. Square root of 4 minus 3 is the square root of 1, which is 1 minus 1 is 0. Plug 7 in. 7 minus uh, 3 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2, minus 1 is 1. Plug 12 in. 12 minus 3 is 9, the square root of 9 is 3, minus 1 is 2. I might not be able to get that guy in, but we know the shape. It's half of a parabola. It's just that it's no longer at 0, 0 because it went 3 to the right, 1 down. So 3 to the right, 1 down. There's where that first point would be. 3, negative 1, 4, 0. 5, 6, 7, 7, 1. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 would be way out here. It would be way out here like this. So I get this shape. Okay? It stops there. It doesn't circle back around. It's not a whole parabola. It's just half of a parabola for the square root one. All right, let's see if we can sneak 6 in here before I have to. Oh, yeah, we can do 6 here. It's 1 fourth the square root of x. Let's see. There goes my pen, or my yardstick. Pen, that wasn't even close. All right. Maybe you should have Summer watch this with you so I can get her ready for high school a little faster. Maybe not. All right, so now, oops. Let's change it. Now I'm graphing for problem number six. I'm graphing y equals one fourth the square root y equals one fourth the square root of x. Well that one fourth is not in the inside. It's not added or subtracted on the outside. It's multiplied. That's another dilation. This is going to be squeezing it down by a factor of four. It's going to be one fourth as tall as the uh, parent graph is here. So I'm going to still use the same x values because those are nice values to use for square root 0, 1, 4, and 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm going to make each one of these worth 1. And then I plug 0 in. The square root of 0 is 0 times a fourth is 0. I plug 1 in. The square root of 1 is 1 times a fourth is 1 fourth. I'm going to do some approximating. Plug 4 in. The square root of 4 is 4 times a fourth excuse me, the square root of 4 is 2, times a fourth, that's a fourth times 2, that's 2 fourths or a half. Plug 3 in, the square root of 9, plug 3 in, plug 9 in, the square root of 9 is 3, times 1 fourth is 3 fourths. All right, so I'm going to have, I'm going to have 0, 0, 1, 1 fourth, 4, 1 half. 9 3 fourths. So this thing is really flattened out. Looks practically horizontal. And hopefully you'll draw a, ni a, much, a nicer curve than I have right there for you because this curve is a little sloppy. Hopefully you'll get a good job on that. And that's what the graph looks like. So now we're ready for problem number seven. I gotta try to rush through these a little bit, kiddo, because I've got a class comp starting up here in about 15. Although Mr. Kelly said he'd watch my class for me if I got there a little late, which I don't want to impose too much on him. So for problem number seven here, I've got y equals two-thirds the square root of x minus three. Well, this two-thirds is on the outside, but it's times it. So like this guy, this is going to affect, it's going to be like a squeezing or a stretching. And because it's less than one, it's going to squish it in or compress it. The minus three on the end, we know that that drops it down three units. So I think I can probably get this on this graph right here. I'm going, because I'm taking the square root of x, I'm going to use, well, I've erased it. I'm going to use the same x values as I've done before. I'm going to have 0, 1, 4, and 9, and that goes out to 9. Plug 0 in, the square root of 0 is 0, times 2 thirds is 0, minus 3 is negative 3. Plug 1 in, the square root of 1 is 1, times 2 thirds is 2 thirds. 2 thirds minus 3 is negative 2 and 1 third. I know fractions your favorite. Plug 4 in, the square root of 4 is 2, 
times two-thirds is four-thirds, common denominator, four-thirds minus three, that'd be nine-thirds, would be negative five-thirds. Hope I did that right. I think I did. Four-thirds minus, uh, wait a minute, nine, yeah, I think that's right. And then I plug nine in, the square root of nine is three times two-thirds, three times two-thirds is two, the threes cancel, two minus three is a negative one. So this is going to get squished down, and it's also going to get dropped down because of the minus 3. It's going to look like this guy, he said it's going to be skinnier and drop down. So let's graph these points to get it started. 0, negative 3, 1, 2, 3, right down here. 1, negative 2, and 1 third would be about here. 4, negative 5 thirds is negative 1 and 2 thirds would be about here. 9, negative 1, that would be about here. Do you see how flattened it is? Not as bad as this one, but still flatter. And so now, let me grab a different color pen so you can see it a little bit easier. At least I thought I had a different color pen. Well, oh, we'll use the green one this time. And the graph will look like this. And again, that's a little sloppy. Try to do your best. Use a pencil, write softly until you get it to look the way you want, and then darken it in with your pencil. All right, the next problem up, two to go here. The next problem up, problem number eight, is, ooh, this one's a peach. Problem number eight, I might have to use this one here because of the way it looks. I have y equals negative two times the cube. I think there's a time sign in there. I couldn't read it for sure because I got a bad copy. Minus, oh, minus 1, minus 3. This negative 2 is going to do a lot of damage here. It's going to, because of the negative, it's going to reflect it in the y-axis, or excuse me, in the x-axis. It's going to stretch it. It's going to shift it 1 to the right and 3 down. Yikes. Let me go ahead and use this one up here. Even though I just did this one, let me go ahead and try this one up here. I'm going to create a table. It's a cube root. I'd like to have these numbers here, but remember, I'm subtracting 1. So if I plug negative 8 in, negative 8 minus 1 is not a perfect cube. So I'll plug negative 7, because that'll give me negative 8. I'll plug in 0, that'll give me negative 1. I'll plug in 1, that'll give me 0. I'll plug in 2, that'll give me 1. And then I'll plug in 9, because 9 minus 1 is 8. So negative 7 in first. Negative 7 minus 1 is negative 8. The cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Times negative 2 is 4. Minus 3 is 1. Yikes! 0. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. The cube root is negative 1 times negative 2 is 2. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. This is all becomes 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Plug in the 2. 2 minus 1 is 1, the cube root of 1 is 1, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, minus 3 is negative 5. Plug in the 9. 9 minus 1 is 8, the cube root of 8 is 2, times negative 2 is negative 4, minus 3 is negative 7. I don't think my graph's going to be far enough down here, let's see. We'll have to adjust it as we go here. I think I'm going to have to make these worth 2. So now I'm going to grab, I'm going to go up here, I'm going to grab these points for problem number eight. And let's use, uh, where's my purple pen? I haven't used that one. There it is. Hang in there, Aiden. I'm going to grab negative seven, positive one. Now remember, it's going to look like this, but because of the negative, it's going to be flipped. It's going to be reflected. It's going to go up and it's going to go down. It's going to go up this way and down this way. And then it's going to be stretched a little bit because of the 2. It's going to be shifted to the right 1, down 3. So let's see what happens. Negative 7, positive 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, positive 1. Because these are over 2. Um, let's see. 0, negative 1. 0, negative 1. That'd be right here. 1, negative 3. 1, negative 3 would be right here. 2, negative 5. That would be right here. And 9, uh, let's see, 7, 8, 9, 9, negative 7. About here, I guess. 2, 4, 6, about here. Do you see the shape? It's going to go up like this, and it's going to curve down and like this. 
Yikes! Oops, I missed. I'll make that down a little bigger. That's the graph. I kind of told you how it was going to be, uh, the directions it was going to be going. All right. Oh, that's this guy. That's not this one. That's this guy here. This is problem number eight. Now, I got one to go, and I'm hoping it's not too bad. Oh, it's a stinker. All right. Let's see if we can put it in on this one here. And I'll, here, let me erase this now, because this is now number nine. Okay, let's see what we can do here. This is number nine, and this is y equals the square root of 2x plus 6. Holy moly, moly, moly. This 2 times the x is going to shrink it in. The plus 6 is going to shift it to the left 6 units. It's still going to kind of look like this. It's going to be squished in and moved over. Squished in and moved over. But it looks like it's moved over 6. Technically, it's not been moved over 6. I think I said that. Technically, this is 2 times x plus 3. It's been shifted 3 to the left. So let's start thinking about it. What numbers will give me um, perfect squares? Well, I need this to be a 0. So x would have to be negative 3 to get a 0. I need this to be uh, a 1. So to get a 1 out of here, I would need um, negative 3. No, I would need 2 and a half. 2 times 2 and a half is 5. Uh, Negative two and a half. Let's try that. Two times negative two and a half is negative five plus six is one. So I need negative two and a half, one. Ooh. All right, now I want this to be a four. To get this to be a four, I need this to be a negative one. Two times negative one is negative two plus six is four. So if I plug in a negative one, I get the square root of four, which is two. Now I want this to be a nine. To get this to be a 9, this would have to be 1 and a half. 2 times 1 and a half is 3, plus 6 is 9. So I'm kind of dancing a little bit there with uh, some of these numbers. So this is 1 and a half. And that would give me a 3 here. So now, the good news is, I know the basic shape. These five, four points should be enough to get a good idea of what's going on. So negative 3, negative 2 and a half. Negative 2 and a half positive 1. Oh, wait a minute, that seems, wait a minute, I forgot something. Negative 3, 0. Holy moly, where did that come from? Negative 3, 0 goes here. I'm looking at these two numbers. It's these two numbers, all right? Sorry about that, Aiden. Negative 2 and a half, 1. Negative 2 and a half, 1. See how much further it's going to open up? Because it's, um, it's been squished in this way, which gives it the effect of being stretched out this way. Um, negative 1, 2. And one and a half, three. And you have the graph. And it's going to go like that. Oops, I missed. Make that a little bit bigger there. Now that was a little fast, so I don't mind if you give me a call if, if I went too fast and you don't understand something about this. But hopefully this will help you with the graphs. It's got a little bit to it. You've got to think about it. You've got to make a plan on getting the right x values for your t-chart to graph these things. All right, give me a call if you need some help.